Welcome back. Last week, the Wisconsin National Guard named its Recruiter of the Year. He is Staff Sergeant Lance Lawfer, and he earned that distinction after enlisting 17 recruits into the Guard in the last year. No small feat at a time where recruiting for the services is becoming increasingly difficult. The Wisconsin National Guard recruited five fewer members overall in 2023 versus the year before but missed its recruiting goal by nearly 50%, 490 recruits fewer than needed. And we're joined now by Major Jason Morrison. He is a recruiting company commander of Company A that's based out of Madison, and you, you oversee quite a few recruiters uh, down there. Let's talk about this recruiter of the year first, Major. He enlisted 17 recruits. That earned him the top spot. There were 574 recruits statewide. So does that ratio kind of speak to the difficulty of this task? Absolutely, sir. So we are um, really tasking our recruiters with uh, trying to find somewhere between 10 and 12, depending on their area that we assign them. So okay. the fact that he was able to find 17 qualified folks who want to join our organization is a huge win for him. Um, that's, a, that's a higher, much higher rate than we've had in the last couple of years. You've been part of the Guard, I believe, since going back to 2012. Uh, you've been attached to units in Green Bay, Appleton, Fond du Lac, commanding in Ripon. Now you command in Madison. How have you seen first participation, but then recruiting change in your time with the Guard? Well, we've seen populations change over time. Um, I would say when I first joined, it was closer to uh, 2001. There was a, a large generation of folks who joined for that reason specifically. Um, reasons have changed over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, obviously, yeah. different generation in uniform, so different motivations. So with all that being said, how much more creative do you need to be in, in your recruiting pitches and, and the way you try and reach potential recruits? Well, it's a, a good challenge to have because <laughs> okay. it makes us really own everything that the Guard can bring to the table. Um, it's a really diverse organization. Anything that you can do in civilian life, you can do in the Army National Guard. And we've really tasked our recruiters with engaging on a personal level, each applicant, and seeing where we can fit and really improve folks' lives. I'm curious how you use the um, high cost of college education right now. I mean, that's certainly a factor for kids making this decision. How is that used in recruiting? Not necessarily against colleges, but in a way to facilitate maybe down the line a chance to get into college and afford that education. First off, it's a really talented pool of applicants that are in college already. So we know that there are people that are motivated, interested in improving their lives, uh, kind of changing the outcome of where they want to go. And the Guard really helps with that more than anything. So it's about identifying, you know, folks who may have uh, some troubles getting to where they want to get and seeing where we can help them uh, reach their goals. Major, in any way, do you compete with the technical college system or can you work in tandem with the technical college system? I would say we 100% work with technical colleges. Um, the, the things that we offer are very complimentary. Um, technical colleges do a really good job of getting folks the kind of skills that they need to be successful mm -hmm. right away. I would say the National Guard is a complement to that more than anything else. Um, not only in a classroom setting, but you come to the Guard and we've got uh, the hands-on experience that you can start right away as soon as you get back from training. I mentioned in our setup that, that the goal that you folks set for last year, uh, you missed it by almost 500 recruits. And the year before, it, was, it wasn't quite that many, but it was in the multiple hundreds. Does that trend, how does that relate to pressure on you folks to recruit? I, I mean, you can't ignore it, right? We have to embrace it. Um, the pressure is real. How do you real. do that? Uh, yeah, we have, to, uh, we have to do better. We have to get a little smarter about the messages that we're, um, that we're putting out there. People have to do a better, under jo a better job of understanding what we can bring to the table. And really, it's about connecting what we offer with what folks need. So um, a lot of times, folks view us in the National Guard as, as going to war primarily, and they view that through a lens of September 11th, Iraq, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And really, the Guard's more than that. The Guard is um, living where you live, uh, being a part of your hometown, and then bringing those skills back to your hometown to help people around you. And not to focus all the attention on, on, on the shortcomings the Guard has had with, with recruiting. I mean, this is, this is across the services, right? I mean, last year, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force all fell short of their recruiting goals. The Army missed its goal by about 10,000. So how does the Guard 
try and help fill that gap, or, or can you as you try and deal with your own gaps? The job is to provide force, you know, for the executive branch of the United States of America when we go fight the nation's war. So that, at the end of the day, that's what we're supposed to do. Um, it's a team effort more than anything else. The Guard provides a really unique perspective. So when we as Guardsmen and, and recruiters in specific are trying to uh, communicate that to applicants, we have to do a good job of explaining exactly what the Guard is. You're going to come home. You're going to be within the state of Wisconsin. That appeals to a lot of folks who don't want to make the jump to go so serve, you know, in Japan or Korea um, for years away from family and friends. All right, Major, we appreciate the time. We wish you the best of luck, and we thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.